Hey, this is Mike Lindsay from Vital MX, and we are back for another episode of our Inside Features with the best factory bikes and satellite privateers, man, whatever it is, trick us bikes in the pits. Today, we are checking out Dylan Schwartz's 2022 Bar X Chaparral Suzuki RMZ250. The Bar X team has acted as Suzuki's amateur support program for quite a few years now, making a bit more of a push over the last year, year and a half or so into the pro ranks. And this year they are taking on everything. They're doing West and East Coast, outdoors, whole nine yards with a four man team. And Dylan Schwartz was definitely the highlight for them last year in outdoors, managing to put this bike up inside the top five at many, many nationals and really showing that Yes, the Suzuki still can go fast, and yes, it can make some power with the right people behind it. The team itself is based right next door to Twisted Development, so Jamie Ellis and the crew there has been working with them for many years now to try to get the best out of this machine. Jamie had a really good package for them going the last few years, and the team also had the opportunity to buy some leftover components and engine from the JGR team when they closed up shop. They received a few engines that they purchased from them and went to work trying to figure out what was the best that those guys knew, what the best that Jamie knew, threw it all together and came up with a spec and really just stretched and got everything out of the Suzuki possible. And impressively, they have taken this bike farther than really anybody thought it could go at this point. With this, nothing on this engine is really left untouched, whether it's the transmission, the crank, the rod, the piston, the cylinder head, all the valve train, etc. Yes, of course, the head is ported. Again, taking the best of what they knew when they got the JGR motor apart and figured out what head spec was best. The piston is designed to Jamie Ellis' spec by JE Pistons, and we believe it's highly likely that the rod is probably a Wiseco Racer Elite, as Wiseco and JE are owned by the same company, race-winning brands. It is very probable that this bike probably has a long rod kit in it currently. No, that does not mean it is a stroker. The piston still travels the same exact length or distance as stock. It just means that the rod itself is longer, meaning that the pin inside the crank has been repositioned slightly, or that the piston pin has been moved up into the piston farther, giving them a little bit longer rod, which changes the dwell time at top dead center. All this can overall increase power, but it can also change the engine characteristic a little bit. The Suzuki and the Yamaha are the only two 250s left in the class using a cam over bucket design, meaning that the camshaft lobes contact a bucket which presses down on the keepers and the valve shim, which pushes down on the valve spring and opening the valve. Uh, a lot of people have figured by now that all the OEMs would change over um, to a finger follower design like we see in the KTM, the Honda, and the Cowie, etc. But like I said before, as Star and even Bar X has proven, you can still make a lot, a lot of power out of just a standard cam over bucket design. The bike is dual fuel injected stock, albeit we wouldn't be surprised if Jamie has tweaked on this a little bit. We've heard that he likes to modify the standard throttle bodies, tapering them, changing the overall size when needed for certain applications. And we also wouldn't be surprised if the team has played with different injectors for different spray patterns and such to really get the best out of this machine. The exhaust system is supplied by FMF and they use a Vortex ECU to build out all the custom mapping to operate this engine. The Bar X squad and Jamie from Twisted Development have added an electric water pump to this bike, again, removing all the mechanical load and friction created by the mechanical pump being driven off the motor, removing that from the system and turning over all those duties to the electric pump, which flows and pushes the water through the cooling system and into the engine and back out again. Albeit the electric water pump on this bike seems to be a different manufacturer design than we've seen on the HRC, MCR, and Star bikes with an overall different external look and definitely a different way of working. We're not really sure what the differences are between these pumps, but clearly both work for the respected applications. The team manager, Larry Brooks, is a firm believer in if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. And that is clear for a few components on this bike. The Suzuki already, of course, handles really well, so standard swing arm. Uh, mainframe, no real modifications there, added gusseting or anything of that nature. It does use stock triple clamps, no different offset, no different material is the stock cast clamps, which from what we've seen back when RCH was working with Ken Roxon was a popular choice for this machine. One of the only items we really noticed from the chassis department that was different was the linkage itself, which have likely been supplied by Rob from RG3. 
Uh, Rob was long known for working with the factory Suzuki effort on their suspension and is doing the fork and shock duties on this motorcycle. The suspension is Showa Kit suspension. Once again, the majority of it was purchased as leftovers from the JGR team. Um, so it's basically the same spec of components that they had used in the past. 49 millimeter front fork and Showa, a little bit different than the stock 48 millimeter KYBs that come on the bike. And then instead of using the stock KYB shock, again, they use a Showa Kit shock on this motorcycle, a little bit larger compression adjuster, 18 millimeter shaft, and all the upgrade components to handle the duties that are needed for Supercross. We also notice the bike seems to be equipped with stock engine hangers, uh, all stock hardware. There's no titanium that we notice throughout this bike, whether it's axles, um, all the bolts on the engine, all the case bolts, the engine hangers, the plastic. Heck, the bike even has stock hubs. So a lot of these items they've just left alone. They haven't worried too much about weight. Instead, trying to maximize the Suzuki's amazing handling by getting the suspension up to stuff where the bike will feel comfortable because that is usually the biggest complaint with the stock Suzuki is the standard suspension just is not up to the task and duties as needed. And they've also just really focused on taking the Suzuki's older engine package and bringing it up to the modern era in terms of power. The team has been partnered with Pirelli for many years now, mostly utilizing their MX32 mid soft tire front and rear, although using a mid hard in conditions that are required of them. The gearing on this bike is also unique as we've typically seen them run a 13 tooth front sprocket with a 53 tooth rear, making the bike fairly short gear to gear, but increasing a lot of that punch and character. We saw Dylan Schwartz be very competitive again on this bike in outdoors of 2021. And as 2022 has just begun, Carson Mumford has pulled some heat race hole shots on this bike and shown that it can be up front in almost any situation. If you'd like to learn more about these bikes, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us the thumbs up all the goodies so you continue to see our inside features going through all the best factory satellite support and privateer bikes in the pits. And then for all the things that change week to week, make sure you check out our website, vilomx.com. We do a weekly pit bits feature from the races. It goes up every race day and it shows the latest helmets, gear, what the teams are doing new to the bikes, who's bringing what to the field to try to be more competitive. We highlight that every week, so make sure you check that out as well. And thanks for watching.